What if your brain was to get hacked? Like a bunch of dudes in Guy Fox masks can suddenly read your mind, steal your memories, or even control your body. What if the government could spy on your thoughts? This is the number one concern that inevitably comes up whenever we talk about any topic related to Elon Musk's Neuralink brain implant company. What's to stop someone from just hacking into it? So, Neuralink operates on a fairly simple premise. They're going to stick a bunch of tiny wires into the surface of your brain and connect those electrodes into a tiny computer chip implanted in your skull. Something with about the complexity of an Apple Watch. And then, like a smartwatch, that chip will connect to a more powerful computer, like a smartphone or a laptop via Bluetooth connection to transmit data back and forth. And that wireless Bluetooth connection does present a certain vulnerability. Hacking Bluetooth devices is pretty common. It's generally referred to as blue bugging or bluejacking. A hacker will use software on their device to achieve a brute force pairing to the target device and gain connectivity. At that point, the hacker can install malware on the device that will provide them access to data. If a nefarious hacker were to gain access to your smartwatch, they could read your text messages, your emails, and listen to your telephone calls. And as Elon Musk has said many times, Neuralink is basically just a Fitbit in your skull. So could it be just as vulnerable to blue bugging? This is obviously something that Neuralink has put some thought into. During a live Q&A session following a 2020 product demonstration, Neuralink was asked specifically about the security of the device and precautions being taken. That question was answered by DJ CEO, the head of chip design at Neuralink, who said, Privacy and security are top priorities at Neuralink, especially given the sensitivity of the data that we're collecting. One of the things that we're ensuring is to make sure that a lot of the interactions with the brain data is going to be encrypted and authenticated properly. One of the things that we have the ability to do at Neuralink is that we work on every layer of the product from chip design to source code. And it really gives us a unique opportunity to embed security as part of our design from the get-go. It's also fairly important to remember that the first implementations of Neuralink is going to be purely as a medical device for a very limited number of patients who suffer from full body paralysis, either due to an injury or degenerative brain disease. And there will be a very long product development cycle before these devices ever get to the point of mass market adoption, where able-bodied people will be going around, living their lives, with a Neuralink in their head. But that's not to say that hacking of medical devices isn't a problem. There is a history here. The idea first started to spread from a 2012 episode of the TV show Homeland. There was a plotline where terrorists assassinated a fictional vice president by hacking his pacemaker that controlled his heart rhythm. In a 2013 interview with 60 Minutes, former real-life vice president Dick Cheney revealed that he had doctors disable the wireless feature of his pacemaker when it was installed in 2007. Cheney said that he considered the danger of a remote attack on his heart to be a credible threat. This vulnerability was fully brought into the daylight at a 2018 information security conference when a pair of security researchers demonstrated that they could remotely disable an implantable insulin pump and then they followed that up by taking total control over a pacemaker system and delivered malware directly to the implanted device. The reason they did this was to put pressure on the device makers to up their level of cybersecurity. Now, fortunately, we couldn't find any specific evidence of someone being harmed by a hacked medical device, but it's not outside the realm of possibility as was demonstrated by these good guy hackers, also known as white hats. The nefarious hackers are the black hats. That brings us over to a great example from another Elon Musk company that has been long scrutinized for hacking vulnerability, Tesla. Obviously, when Tesla rolled out the idea of fully autonomous robot cars, people were quick to wonder what might happen if hackers decided to attack these vehicles and take over control. 
Elon Musk talked about this specifically during a 2017 interview back when full self-driving had just been launched. I, I think one of the biggest uh, risks for autonomous vehicles is somebody achieving um, a fleet-wide hack. And Elon specified at the time some of the steps that Tesla had already taken to protect against a full-scale takeover, saying, Within the car, there are multiple subsystems that have specialized encryption, like the powertrain, for example. Even if someone gains access to the car, they cannot take control of the powertrain or braking system. That statement was quickly put to the test by a white hat hacker named Jason Hughes, who was pretty well known in the Tesla forums at the time. He had a history with hacking into the Tesla supercharger network and exposing a vulnerability that let him identify all of the cars that were currently recharging at every station. A fairly innocent breach, but for sure a privacy concern for those vehicle owners. Tesla paid him $5,000 for exposing the bug. This is something that Tesla calls its bug bounty program, something that they launched early on in 2014 to actively encourage white hat hackers to find the weak spots in Tesla's security armor. Hughes followed that up with a significantly more dangerous hack. He was able to make his way into a Tesla server called Mothership, which is a direct communication with the entire vehicle fleet. From there, all he needed was a car's VIN number, and he could access vehicle information such as the exact GPS location and even send commands directly to the car. That doesn't mean he could take full control and start driving it around like that scene from Batman Returns with the Penguin and the Batmobile, but it does mean that he could activate the summon feature that would trigger the car to start driving autonomously. Again, being a white hat hacker, Hughes did not wreak any havoc with robot cars and reported the bug to Tesla. This find netted him a $50,000 reward. And this is a trend that Tesla has continued into the present day. In 2020, Tesla brought a Model 3 to the Pwn to Own hacking competition. They basically said, if you can hack this car, you can drive it home. A pair of hackers did end up taking control of the car's infotainment system, and they left with the Model 3, while Tesla gained a new security fix. Let's also remember that the Russian government has been trying to take down Starlink internet service over Ukraine through cyber attacks for the past year, and they have not been successful. So, all of that to say that Elon Musk's companies have a history of being very smart with cybersecurity using ethical hackers to help them find and repair vulnerabilities in their system before they can be exploited by the black hat side of the culture. There's really no reason to think that Neuralink would be any different. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. It's also important to remember that cybersecurity is not entirely the responsibility of the company who makes a product. There is an onus on the user to maintain good security practices as well. What we mean is that what most people often claim to be hacking is not so much a targeted attack as it is an exploitation of an obvious vulnerability that was left wide open. So when your friend Karen complains about her Instagram being hacked, what she actually means is she used her dog's name and her birthday as her password, both of which are posted in her Facebook bio, and she doesn't understand how anyone could have possibly figured that out. If you check on NordPass.com, they post the 200 most common passwords of the year. And in 2022, the number one spot was password, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six in the second spot. So even in the modern era, we as a society still manage to fail miserably at protecting our own data. And that's something that needs to change regardless of whether we all end up with computers in our brains or not. So hopefully that's given you something to think about, or at least a reminder that as worried as the general public might be, there is no one more concerned about the danger of a Neuralink being hacked than Neuralink themselves and their boss, Elon Musk, who has a solid track record so far. So we're inclined to have some faith until we see anything that would prove otherwise, like 
if a bunch of remotely hijacked Teslas suddenly descend on the Twitter headquarters or something like that, I'll happily change my mind. But what would it take for you to believe that Neuralink was safe and secure to operate without any significant danger of being hacked? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.